Q fever is bacterial infection. It is caused by Coxiella brunetii, which is bacteria, and it is zoonotic infection. Zoonotic means that this bacteria primarily affects and infects cattle, usually goats and sheep, and it is transmitted from cattle to humans, and transmission happens uh, by inhalation. Bacteria usually lives in milk, urine, and feces of this cattle, and when they dried out, can be inhaled as a dust. And people are high risk when they live or work near farms and near these cattle. Q fever has usually two forms. First form is acute Q fever, and second is chronic Q fever. Acute uh, is most common. It happens in 95% of cases, and 1 to 5% of cases, chronic form also occurs. Symptoms of acute Q fever is flu-like symptoms such as fever, headache, fatigue, muscle ache, and usually it's respiratory uh, symptom because this bacteria usually affects respiratory symptom system. Uh, it's too difficult to identify and to say what is specific symptoms of Q fever because it looks like just flu and you can't differentiate them from flu if you uh, if you consider context for example contact with contact with uh, cattle especially sheep and goats uh, then you can think about q fever but in other cases almost it's impossible to identify this uh, disease uh, as a q fever that's why lots of cases are undi undi uh, undiagnosed this fever um, and now let's say about chronic uh, Q fever. Chronic Q fever is mm, very serious because usually it affects heart and causes endocarditis. Endocarditis is half, uh, heart valve inflammation and in 95% of cases it's fatal if left untreated. So it's very serious. How we can identify chronic Q fever? Uh, common symptoms are fever, heart murmur, and night sweats. Uh, actually, it's also not specific symptoms, it's just endocarditis symptoms, which can be caused by different, um, different causes, including different bacteria, viruses. Um, so uh, it's not specific also, but symptoms are fever, heart murmur, and night sweats. Uh, and now uh, let's ask for questions. Uh, questions: What is incubation period? Um, uh, it, it means uh, period when person had first touch with the bacteria and uh, two first sy symptoms. It's two to three weeks. Uh, so incubation period is two to three weeks, and symptoms usually last uh, one week. After one week, usually recovery occurs, and after we recovery, fatigue can last for several weeks. Of course, in case of um, uh, chronic form, uh, symptoms can last much longer. Uh, diagnosis, uh, diagnosis is made by uh, serology, uh, especially indirect in immunofluorescence assay, IFA and uh, we try to identify IgM and IgG antibodies that's a gold standard of diagnosis and treatment is antibiotic doxycycline for 2 to 3 weeks um, treatment is very treatment is very effective and fatality rate is dropped less than 5% if this disease is treated so uh, treatment is very important and early diagnosis also crucial if there is a chronic Q fever, doxycycline and hydroxychloroquine uh, is used at least 18 months and sometimes treatment is needed uh, lifelong, whole life. And there is question, uh, if we have vaccine and vaccination if eff effective. Yes, uh, we have vaccine and vaccination is effective, but a vaccin uh, vaccination at this case have side effects, serious side effects. Uh, that's why in many cases it's avoided, especially if person uh, previously infected by Q fever and such person vaccinates, 
it can cause serious side effects such as fever, headache, and uh, this can be quite serious. That's uh, that's why vaccine is very popular at this case, and sometimes it's avoided. But if it's proved that person has no uh, previous infection by blood tests, and such person is high risk, uh, he, he's because of occupational work or live uh, near cattle, then vaccine is recommended. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you for your interest. Thank you for your watching. If you like my video, please thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye for now.